You alright my lover? I look like somebody from Devon or something wearing this. Or like a chimney sweep or... I don't know. Anyway, so 15,000 of you watch my top 10 beginner fragrances, and that's quite a lot of people. That could be a couple of reasons. Uh, one of the main reasons is, is that this community is usually filled to the brim with beginners, people who are just starting out, and you've got to respect those people. You, you know, this isn't all just for you know, advanced people who have been doing this for a very long time. So we're going to go in the middle, and this is intermediate fragrances. And what do I mean by an intermediate fragrance? To me, there is such a thing, and that's a fragrance that can show you the way to um, more complicated concepts, uh, interesting ideas. And there's a lot of fragrances here that for me personally, introduced me to a sort of a different level of thinking when it came to fragrances. You know, I like uh, anybody else started out with the nice clean designer soapy fragrances that were really pleasant and I still love those. You know, my love for those haven't gone down, but it's good every now and then to take a step up, especially if, you're wanna, if you want to take this uh, hobby seriously, if you really want to go for it. So these fragrances to me are fragrances that have got really interesting and innovative ideas fragrances that could make you go oh right I didn't know a fragrance could do that oh you know this is something that maybe I wouldn't have originally thought of wearing but you can enjoy there isn't anything too insane there isn't anything too crazy that would be of course be an advanced list but this is pushing the boundaries this is going to push your olfactory system and there are some really really uh, artistic well thought out fragrances in this list starting with number one uh, also I just want to clarify there isn't really a sort of like 10 is better than one or whatever anything like that it's more the intensity is turned up so this number one is probably the safest of the intermediates and then number 10 is when we're going a little bit a little bit crazy but again nothing too crazy because we're not there yet but a prime example of what I'm talking about is number one. This is Salted Green Mango. We're actually starting off where we left yesterday with Alicia. This was her number one niche. And I'm going to tell you something right here. Uh, I really, really love this. I think it's probably my, probably my favorite pickup of 2019 uh, because it is something that you can tell that there is a, a real difference it isn't just you know isoe super and you know um whatever aroma chemical i'm trying to think of one that's actually like really uh cashmere in it's not just all that shit just thrown into one and and soap and you know aquatic uh just just thrown into it there's a real um idea there's a real innovativeness in we want to explore what a mango can do, what a mango can smell like. You know, with a lot of these fragrances, it's really cutting into the mango, but this is using the mango husk. I'm gonna tell you something straight here. I did a review of this, but I wouldn't actually recommend that. I think that the better review is Peter from Fragrance Views review on Salted Green Mango. He, I watched that review and I was like, perfect. That's, that's literally what I was trying to say in my review, but it's really, really quite something special. It's. It is quite niche, it's a, a niche quality fragrance, but yet it's still familiar, it's still something that I could say to you could blind, bla blind, bly, blah, blind buy very easily and not worry about it. You're still going to get something that's probably going to get a lot of compliments, going to get a lovely bit of attention. But it's fantastic, number one, solid green mango. Number two, we're going to go straight to the Feebster Feb Delicious. Again, this is, the concept here is, you will recognize this and you will understand what this is trying to do, but it's just at a higher level. It's just uh, a more sophisticated level where there's really been time put into this. There's, there's higher quality, more natural ingredients. You smell Fev, you know what Fev is all about. It's trying to be gourmand-like. It's got pralines, which, which gives it a bitterness, but it's got this beautiful chocolatey nuance that you kind of understand, you can totally relate with. It's not a fragrance that's trying to freak you out. It's not a fragrance that is gonna catch you off guard, but it's just done at a higher level. And if you haven't smelled Feb Delicious and you're a fan of things like Angel Man um, and the Valentino Womos and the Duom Intense and Ferragamo's uh, Womo and all that kind of stuff, then you really need to get your nose on this because this just blows all of those away. It is a real treasure. 
and I'm just so thankful. I'm going to be buying a 250 when this is done, and this is nearly done. I've probably got about a year left with this, and then I'm just going <laughs> to go to the 250. Number three, again, this is perfect of what I'm talking about. This is from the house of Maison Margiela. This is by the fireplace. A lot of you will probably expect this in this list. Some of you might be going, well, you know, if you really want to show what fragrance is all about, then you really want to show by the fireplace. By the fireplace is just great conceptual fragrance making where you take a memory or you take an idea you take a situation you take an environment you, you try to, to take the best bits of that smell of that scent aura and you put it into a bottle this is cozy this is warming this has got a bit of wood it's got a bit of fire it's just very very um creative and this really put maison margella along with jazz club on the map this is <laughs> this is quite breathtaking if you like the sound of it by the fireplace and you think, okay, well that conjures up a sort of an image in my mind, trust me, what you're thinking of is what this smells like. Number four, we're really starting to kind of put it up a gear. Maybe this should be a little bit later, but I think that there's, a, there's something that you should really sort of understand with this fragrance. This is Oud Wood. On the card, this smells very icky. It doesn't actually smell too pleasant. I've mentioned that multiple times. When you put this on the skin, if nothing else, Oud Wood is going to teach you on your fragrance journey to not judge a fragrance by the card. Don't judge the fragrance by the paper. Put this on your skin, for goodness sake, and just give it 20 minutes. You may still not like it, or you might have the experience, the transformative healing experience that I had when I put this on the skin, and I thought, oh my god, that is incredible. That is so sexy, that is so wonderful, that is so exciting. I used, I just killed this bottle in 2018. I don't know if you can see um, how much. I've got so many bottles, but I was just wearing this. I became pretty much addicted to it over and over and over again because it just has an incredible transformative effect on your skin. I did a review that's actually quite a fan favorite of, uh, of mine. I did it on Oud Wood. It's when I had the long blonde hair and I looked like... Um, Kurt Cobain. You can go watch that. It's got Chad from A Gentleman's Journey dancing on it. What's, uh, what isn't there to love? Number five is, I mean, I have to put this in there. There is no question that, that this was going to be within this list because this is the fragrance where I smelt this and I thought, okay, hang on a minute. Fragrance ain't just about getting laid. Fragrance ain't just about, you know, um, just wearing soapy and, and people pleasing stuff. This is an actually a true art form. This is something that can really, really be pushed and push the boundaries and, you know, can give you a ton of different experiences and just make you feel so many different emotions as if it were a piece of music, a film that you're watching, a book that you're reading, or a painting. Some of you will know what this is. Uh, I did say painting there. It's not Orinier. No, this is before that. This was Keist by Slumberhouse damn you know um this is actually my scent of the day today because it's cold it's uh well it's cool it's autumnal we've got some real orange spots in the trees and this is literally that it's got peach it's got hay it's got booze it's so so deep it's so so resinous if you haven't smelt this please please i beg you get a sample of this you know, I mean, even a sample, a little five mil sample that you can get from Indie Sense is going to last you at least the season of autumn because it is so strong. This is a trip. This is an experience of a fragrance. I adore it so, so much. I am thankful to this fragrance. I am thankful to Josh Lobb for creating Slumber House because if... Uh, if I hadn't smelt this, if I hadn't got that sample from Indie Sense, I wouldn't be, as Manny so eloquently puts it, balls deep into this hobby as I am now. I probably wouldn't have met Rainier, I probably wouldn't have met Prin, I probably wouldn't have even made it to Essence. Keist is so amazing. Absolutely brilliant, that's number five. Okay, so number six, trying to rock through this, is from the House of Rainier. Probably some of you were thinking that it's Kisses Rain, it's not Kisses Rain because number one everybody knows me for that review anyway and second of all kisses rain is going to be pretty much beyond going to be getting all of the love hugs and kisses from me as we get into autumn and winter you will probably not be hearing the last of kisses rain because that is again something i've been wearing a tremendous tremendous amount recently so i will be talking about kisses rain a hell of a lot so i wanted to give kisses rain a bit of a break and move on to oud rain um oud rain is just one of the greatest oud fragrances ever uh, so original, such a unique take on Oud. This has got a really freshly cut mango. But there's, I mean, I'm going to be doing a review of it, but to just explain, I know and I can tell that 
Right, if you just do a, a mango aroma chemical, if you just kind of put a, a, a citrusy mango, that's not enough to create what they've done with this. I think that what they've done with this, and I've never actually asked Renew about this, but my take on this is they've probably created um, a sea salt accord to create the, the saltiness of the mango, um, or the, the oceanic tones of the mango. They've added probably like two or three fruit aroma chemicals into this, and they've probably added a bit of a musky kind of tone, so that you're not just getting like mango, you're getting the whole three dimensions of the mango, and you're getting the whole uh, scent experience of the mango with the oud. There's been meticulous work done on this to create this fragrance, and you can just tell, you know, Renier is a perfectionist. He will not, he will stop at nothing until he gets what he wants with the fragrances. So that's really, really quite something special. It's, it's really incredible. It is really amazing. And, you know, oud in general is not completely my thing, but if you want a unique, look into what is possible when you converse sort of oud with other notes and other ideas and you also want something still fresh and pretty safe and something that's going to get you a decent amount of attention then oud rain of course is definitely should be on the list number seven is a fragrance i've never spoken about before but i have been wearing it a lot more now that we're getting into the fall this is from the house of siage now there's a lot of talk about house of siage at the moment i think that they're uh, interesting brands they're definitely quite an aggressive brand um they want to be noticed and they want people to know about them and so i do appreciate the hustle uh, the formal's being talked talked about chris is talking about his number one the one that is not being talked about is actually my personal favorite and that is number two this is an incredibly brisk incredibly dark incredibly deep vetiver fragrance think encre noir but on absolute steroids um this is black you know this has got sort of like an inky tone along with the vetiver this is absolutely not to be messed with and if you're wanting a fragrance if you're wanting to move on to a fragrance that has really got some balls, that's really unapologetic and really is going to project out and be very beastly and very formal and quite in your face, but also, you know, very classic, very classy. So if you want all of that, then yeah, I would totally recommend number two by House of Siage. This is a fragrance that's going to show you just how balls to the wall fragrances can get if you really really soak up and push with the aroma chemical and the oil content and push it out of this world and it's a really really intriguing dark deep vetiver as well it's a business vetiver i think i've just coined a term there this is a full-on business vetiver <laughs> so you know it gets shit done and it's really intriguing number eight is a brand that i've never really spoken about. again another brand that i haven't spoken about and i have mixed feelings on them as a brand to be completely honest but when it comes to fragrances they are red they are white hot right now they have got such a rabid fan base i think they've got more of a rabid fan base at the moment than creed do if that's even possible people are really loving them and actually i see a, like whenever i upload a video a top 10 video people are going where are they where are they where is this brand for god's sake uh it is of course from perfumes to marley this is herod Herod is going to show you, in a similar vein to how this is going to show you the balls to the wall kind of fragrance, these are so damn loud, these are so damn pungent, these are almost a little bit messy, I'd say, I'd say that their compositions aren't exactly perfected, I wouldn't say that, you know, there isn't, um, I don't think that there's a sort of a pristine vision in the Parfums de Mali fragrances as say something like the Prins or the Reniers or the Strangers should I say or the Zoologists of the world um, or even the Creeds there's a lot more of a messier factor but it, like with Parfums de Mali it's like what do you think of that right it really is just like Poof! right and you and sometimes you're a bit like okay calm down please chill but that does create a sort of purple cow effect in the way of people will absolutely love them and fight for them and you know just talk about how brilliant and amazing they are and then there's people who are just like whoa I don't even know really what's going on I don't know what that's about they're quite a polarizing brand in that respect I'm still trying to get my head around Herod Herod has got this wild creamy hazelnut type smell um, kind of actually reminds me of uh, a chocolatey sweet that we have here in England called a Kinder Bueno yeah, I really get that from Herod. 
but on a technical basis, this is so damn strong. You know, the term beast mode is said a lot in this community. With Parfums to Mali, they can really wear that with absolute pride. You're going to really experience, I mean, it is just so loud, so pungent, so strong so gourmandy, so sweet, so sickly, with a, like a kind of a cookie base. I know, I, I'm still working on a review with, with Herod, but it is it is something to be smelt, to be believed, because it is so, just so strong and just so in your face and so sweet and gourmandy. It is quite something, and that will definitely um, break you out of the monotony of, you know, beginner, straightforward designer fragrances. Moving on to number nine, we've we've done those two fragrances that are very, very um, crazy and very in your face, but we now are going to go a little bit deeper, but we're also going to go quite elegant. This is a fragrance that I had to sort of learn to appreciate. This is a fragrance that when I first smelt it, I really didn't like it. I really didn't get it. I wasn't ready for it. And I really mean that. I was not ready for this fragrance. I wasn't mature enough to appreciate what this fragrance was doing. And now I cannot see my life without it. This is, of course, from the House of Created is Royal Oud. This is the true successor to Aventus. You know, Royal Oud is so polarizing and so well-made that it kind of has these... Um, kind of waves of popularity and every now and then this bad boy can suddenly become the hottest thing even though it was released nearly 10 years ago and people go oh Royal Oud's amazing and then it dies down and then two years pass and then people go oh yeah Royal Oud's amazing and then it goes down and dips down and then you know another year later and people go oh remember Royal Oud you know it's really stood the test of time it's it will become probably a genuine bona fide classic I think it is the Bois de Portugal it is the um Eau de Sauvage of our time. It's incredibly classy, incredibly peppery, incredibly pungent. It really means business. It is so full of confidence and power and uh, strength, maximum power, all of those things. This will really make you appreciate how well-made fragrances should be. And if you're looking for formal fragrances, then you might just want to take the plunge. So we're at number 10. And again, this is a fragrance that I don't really mention. I think I've only mentioned it maybe once, and that's because, again, it's very polarizing, it's very uh, different, it's very unique, but I think that this fragrance is the most advanced when it comes to showing you what fragrances are capable of. It's not something I wear that much, if I'm completely honest, it's not something that I seek out and, you know, go, all right, well, I'm going to wear this today, but it is so creative and so original and such a cunning and wonderful idea that it deserves to be on this list and it if nothing else i might not even say to you you know i'd recommend to buy this but i'd smell it i would seek out and smell it just to kind of go oh right that's clever this is from the house of memo this is italian leather now their leather ranges in general are very interesting and you know very artistic and you know creative and all that but this one really takes the cake it's it's really wild. It's uh, Italian leather, so you've got a leather, but you've it's got notes of like tomato and basil. And when you smell it, God, I might even just waste a spray here, even though I've got beautiful keystone today. That smells like food. It smells the the tomato note is just used so well, and I think it's a really brave choice to use tomato because that's a freaking hard note to work with. So it smells incredibly foody and almost like a tomato, cheese, basil, like corn chip or crisp. But yet at the same time, it's really balanced out and well, so well done. It is wearable and you could see that people could quite easily wear this and people wouldn't bat an eye. People wouldn't think you've just thrown spaghetti bolognese all over yourself or anything like that. So it's walking this incredibly like fine line between this herbaceous, uh, delicious food uh, composition, but it's also got the leather and the other sort of aroma chemicals that are just going to make it so that it's still in the ballpark of good fragrance. It's something that is very, very creative. I could imagine was very hard and difficult to work out. I could imagine that there were probably a lot of drafts for this fragrance because you can tell that they have really tried to and, and had to think about, well, how are we going to make sure that this all works? Um, but it does. So Italian leather, I'd say, is the fragrance, the number 10, the, the, the top, if you will, fragrance to kind of showcase to you that this isn't just about 
smelling great and smelling nice and smelling amazing and getting laid and you know smelling good for the girls and smelling good for the friends and all that kind of stuff all of that is still an important part of this hobby there's no question of that but it's things like this where you go oh that's kind of cool but yeah those were my top 10 intermediate fragrances or my 10 intermediate fragrances to get you really into the more um the more challenging the more difficult parts of the fragrance game without going too crazy i'll be back probably next month or whenever to do an advanced list that will not be for the faint of heart that will be some crazy crazy shit anyway i'm the fragrance apprentice hope you enjoyed and i'll be seeing you tomorrow thank you so much bye